Welcome. This is Ben Moore from West Highlands United Methodist Church inviting you to join us for worship once again. We've got some music, we've got some familiar faces sharing the scriptures, and God's given me a message that I, I hope will be an encouragement for each and every one of you. But as we lean in, as we prepare our hearts, join me in, in a quick word of prayer to to center us and make us ready. Bow your heads. Lord, we're so thankful for this time. Time can be fleeting. Time is always valuable. May this be a time when our eyes open and our hearts are warmed. May this be a time when the music moves us. When your word jumps out at us that we find encouragement and hope. It's been a brutal week for some of us. Help us to find in all that follows a, a chance to rest and, and rebuild. been an exciting week for some of us. Help us tie in to that excitement as we look to you over these next moments. Lord, we've come to worship because we're convinced you join us. Fill us to overflowing in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I ran across an old friend at the hardware store this week. Didn't recognize him at first glance. We were both masked. But something in his eyes and his voice sounded familiar, and I looked, and why, there was Chris. And we shared just a few words about how life had been going and, and what we'd been up to. He was in sales and sales weren't going quite as well as he had hoped. He started a new vis business venture. We just kind of caught up. We often t carve out time in our worship service to catch up with one another. And one of the ways that we can do that right now is to just pull out a cell phone and, and shoot out a text message. Just let somebody know that you haven't forgotten them. That even though your, your eyes may not have greeted one another this last week or even this last month, as we've been apart, you haven't forgotten. They'll be encouraged, they'll be excited. As the music comes, just pull out your phone and let your fingers do the walking. Share God's good news and God's grace. Equal Exchange was started to build supply chains that work for small farmers to make enough money so that they can stay where they live and cultivate products in a healthy way and one that respects the planet, putting heart and soul and sweat into the best products they can make. Produciendo el cacao, me siento bien. ¿Eh? Uno, contribuyo al desarrollo del país. Dos, aumenta mi producción económica. Tres, me sirve de estreno. <laughs> Muy bien. Ya este está listo para el chocolate. Yeah. The people who make our products possible, going spending time with them in their homes, on their farms. I get to sit down with the cooperatives that we work with and say, you have a blank slate. What are the projects you've dreamed of that will help your cooperative to grow and to innovate? And how can we help you to do that? Vienen aquí personas de Equal Exchange a compartir con productores y con el equipo técnico. Entonces es como una hermandad. Nos ha ayudado a mejorar eh, los procesos en términos de, de calidad. Eso garantiza la sostenibilidad en, en el tiempo. What does Equal Change mean to me? It means Fátima in Nicaragua. It means Angélica in Colombia all of the farmers struggling and fighting and equal exchange means the, the world to me from the point of origin through to the finished product. I always think of the farmers when I go back to my desk in the U.S. and I want to talk about the care and expertise that goes into the products and the change that can be built over time when you support Equal Exchange. I know these people, I'm fighting for these people I'm out in the market, um, you know, trying to tell their story. Lo que ellos están pagando un poquito más por el producto de comercio justo tiene real efecto positivo llegando principalmente al productor. 
You're the ones who make this whole experiment work. And you're the ones through your purchases who are demonstrating that this is a viable way to run a business. You can take a stance with your purchases and that's really powerful. <laughs>
don't pay back anyone for their evil actions with evil actions, but show respect for what everyone else believes is good. If possible, to the best of your ability, live at peace with all people. Don't try to get revenge for yourselves, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. It is written, Revenge belongs to me. I will pay it back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. By doing this, you will pile burning coals of fire upon his head. Don't be defeated by evil, but defeat evil with good. The Gospel reading for today is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 through 28 in the Common English Bible. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he had to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and legal experts, and that he had to be killed and raised on the third day. Then Peter took hold of Jesus and, scolding him, began to correct him. God forbid, Lord, this won't happen to you. But he turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stone that could make me stumble, for you are not thinking God's thoughts, but human thoughts. And then Jesus said to his disciples, all who want to come after me must say no to themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. All who want to save their lives will lose them. But all those who lose their lives because of me will find them. Why would people gain the whole world but lose their lives? What will people give in exchange for their lives? For the human one is about to come with the majesty of his father with his angels. And then he will repay each one for what that person has done. I assure you that some standing here won't die before they see the human one coming in his kingdom. And so ends the reading of today's gospel. Pastor Chuck Phillips at the UCC Church just down the street in Colfax days liked to tell about his first pair of glasses. On the way home, he said it was, Mommy, 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 I can see the leaves on the trees. Mommy, 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 there are birds on that telephone wire. He'd just seen a green blur before and, and blobs on the telephone lines. And he said, I'd wondered for years why some telephone lines had them and some didn't. Just the other day, glancing through Facebook was one of those Teasers, three birds. Share if you can figure out which one is different than the other two. And I looked and I looked, the beaks were the same. The birds were the same size. The heads were identical. They had little ears. Their tail feathers were all the same. And then suddenly I saw it. One of the three didn't have eyebrows drawn in. And once I had seen it, it was like I couldn't not see it. Discipleship, you see, is about seeing ourselves, our world, our church, our future, the way God sees them, the way God sees them. It was an eye-opening moment. Was it the first time? Was it one of a series of times? But we don't know, but it was an eye-opening moment there at the foot of the mountain 
with the bush that would not extinguish. It caught Moses' eye. And the words, holy ground, I am who I am. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to set your people free. Would change his life, would settle him into the plan and the purpose that God had for Moses when he first floated on the River Nile. Eye-opening experiences come along now and then. They're experiences that help us to see ourselves for who we are, to see God for who God is, to see our world for the way God sees it, and to understand our purpose, our plan, our place in all that God has made. Discipleship is about seeing with God's eyes. Last week, we encountered Peter in one of those moments. Flesh and blood has not shown this to you. You are seeing with a different set of eyes, Peter. And yet sometimes these eye-opening experiences can be fleeting for us. They were for Peter. In just the next few verses, as Jesus begins to unfold for them his understanding of God's vision for his future it's Peter again. May it never be so, Lord. May it not be so. Suffer? Die? God forbid. May it not be so. And Jesus, you're no longer seeing with God's eyes, Peter. Get behind me, Satan. Because your words and your misunderstanding is beginning to put blinders on me. Paul, in our section from Romans, talks about some characteristics of those whose eyes are open, some characteristics of those who are walking through each day, eyes open seeing themselves and their world the way God sees it all. He says, first, if you would be a disciple, if you would be one who begins to see the world as God sees it, you begin seeing those around you with the love with which you hold your family. Now, first, first thought may be sort of a schmaltzy, uh, of course, we love mom and dad and brother and sister and grandma and grandpa. But, you know, as we begin to grow, we see a lot of different sides of those in our family, don't we? We begin to see them when they're irritable we begin to see them when they're tired. We begin to see them when they're confused or angry or picking on us. But to be family is to find a way past those things. In spite of their weariness. In spite of their irritability, in spite of their foibles, their grandma and grandpa, mom, dad, brother, sister, and if anyone attacks, the wagons circle, don't they? To hold those who fill our lives with the same sort of love that we hold our family doesn't doesn't mean we don't see them for who they are. It doesn't mean we don't see the warts and we don't see the disappointments. We don't, we don't see 
the challenges that are present in their personality. But it means when, when there's an attack, we circle the wagons. I think that's what many in our country are, are trying to do right now around our brothers and sisters of color. We're trying to circle the wagons. Yes, yes, there are those, <clears throat> there are those who are taking advantage of this. <clears throat> there are those uh, who are using it in ways that are selfish and destructive, and that is wrong. to circle the wagons and say, we have to find a different way of treating one another is to begin treating one another with the sort of love with which we hold our families. Paul says that's a characteristic of those who move through life seeing the world the way God sees it. He says those those who, who walk through the world seeing things as God sees them are those who are happy in their hope. Happy in their hope. You've, you've heard some version of this little story. Two brothers, it's Christmas time. And one of them gets a shiny white fire truck as they pull off the wrappers and reveal the fire truck, they say, oh, I was hoping for a red one. The brother gets a shovel with a ribbon on it and is directed to a room full of manure. And he's over the moon with excitement as he says, with all this, there's gotta be a pony around here somewhere. To be happy in your hope is to look at each day. With all this, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. To move through this world, seeing it as God sees it. You treat one another like family. You hold them with that kind of love and, and, and you're happy in your hope because you know with all this, there's got to be a pony. And you're confident that God will give you the strength and the vision to find it. He says, he says, those who see the world as God sees it are able to stand their ground. Not always angrily, never vindictively, but to stand their ground. The, the, the scripture that comes to me is Joshua, as for me and my house, we will follow the Lord. Claudia and I just purchased our first home. Many of you know that. And as the realtor handed us the keys in the driveway, he said, I've got a little something for you there on the kitchen counter, some bread, some spread, wonderful beverage, and a little plaque with those very words, for me and my house, as for me and my house, we will follow the Lord. Joshua is challenging his people at the nearing the end of their conquest. They have followed him into the promised land. They have followed him through a series of battles. They're beginning to disperse and settle into their own areas in the land that God has given them. And Joshua says, know this, that you're gonna to have to make choices. But what you need to know is choose what you will for me and my house, we'll continue to follow the Lord. Taking a stand. Taking a stand. Continuing to look to God for that eye-opening experience of, of wonder and joy as you greet the rising of each sun 
And as you're there, as it settles below the horizon, thanking God for the day that you've been given. He says those who, who look at the world through, through God-opened eyes are those who are devoted to prayer. Prayer becomes a lifeline. It becomes a conversation. Yes, you get to do some talking. But the more you grow in this relationship, in this conversation, you get to do some listening. It's a lifeline because it, it keeps showing you God's will and, and, and God's way. It, it keeps it encouraging you when the days are long and, and the way is difficult. It's your way of reaching those in your circle. It's your way of reaching beyond those in your circle. It's your way of inviting God in each day into every way that you choose to move through the life that God has given you. Devoted to prayer. Devoted means to lean in, right? It, 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 means, it means to look expectantly uh, and with anticipation. Of, of new insight, of new understanding, of, of new encouragement. Discipleship is about, about seeing the world as God sees it. And for those who would do that, prayer becomes a lifeline. Prayer becomes a lifeline. It says, he says that those who who would see the world as God sees it, are all about meeting the needs of others. They're all about meeting the needs of others. It's almost like we've gone full circle back to treating everyone like family, holding others with that sense of, of love and concern. And as I pondered those words, I couldn't help thinking of Uncle Pat. He was such a character, uh, not one who, who was comfortable inside the doors of the church, although he spent a year teaching Sunday school in a Methodist church in White Salmon, Washington, maybe two. But then because he, he was such a character, the church decided that uh, he wasn't a very good influence. What I remember about Uncle Pat though is that there was always room at his table for anyone who was hungry. He said, he said to me many times, he said, you know, if I have nothing else to offer you, I, I have a meal anytime you're passing through. There's a place at my table and I will give you some of my time to listen and to share, to just remind you that I care. Those who move with, with this vision, this eye-opening understanding, seeing the world as God sees it, well, that's, that's discipleship. And, and those are folks who genuinely care. I sometimes say, if, if you want to build a bridge, take a genuine interest in another person. Find out their hopes and their dreams. Listen in as they, they tell you about the path they're on and, and the challenges and, and the joys and, and get them talking about their children or their grandchildren. Take a genuine interest. and you'll find a way to connect. Uncle Pat had a way about him. Everybody in town knew him. He was something of a local politician, 
but there was always room at his table. Character as he was, there was always time in his day. People who begin to see the world the way God does are people like that. And Paul sort of sums it all up as he says, in in every way that it depends on you, be at peace with everyone. In so far as it depends on you, live your life in a way that puts you at peace with those who cross your path, with those who share this earth with you. Now, that doesn't guarantee that your life will always be peaceful because the key is, so far as it depends on you, there will be others who take advantage. There will be others who stir up trouble. There will be those who try to get you involved in their their mischief or sucked into their strife. But so far as it depends on you, Paul says, Be at peace with those in your world. Discipleship is about eye-opening experiences that help you begin to see the world the way God sees it. They lead you to your place and your purpose the way they did Moses. Sometimes they're elusive like they were for poor Peter. They develop a certain character in those who would seek after them and embrace them and let them lead the way. We begin to treat one another like family. Seeing all sides, giving grace to everyone, We're happy in our hope because with all this that's going on, there's got to be a pony somewhere. We learn to treat one another with love and respect. There's a place at our table. We take an interest in others. We build our lives around prayer, around our lifeline, like deep sea divers with that oxygen line connecting them to to a life-giving pump somewhere up on the surface. In so far as it depends on us, we live in peace with those who cross our path and those who share our world. Discipleship is about seeing the world the way God does. With eyes that are so wide open, we can't not see it. With a life so filled with joy that now we can see the leaves and the birds on the wire that every day becomes an adventure and an opportunity. Discipleship is about seeing the world as God sees it. How about it?
Some of you know word came since uh, since I taped last week's message of a death in our sort of our sister <clears throat> congregation, one of the faithful with family in both congregations uh, and friends in both congregations passed away and we were all saddened. I hope I hope you've grabbed some time to. Just thank God for the ways their life touched yours, and, and that's one of the things we want to do now. Words come to me of, of one of our folks who, who broke a hip and uh, is in rehab, and my schedule has been so brutal. We just haven't caught up yet, but I want Rick to know that I've been praying, and I hope you have too. His name has been traveling around. One of our members lost a sister. Another has a sister and brother with COVID far, far from here. Many things fill our lives with cares. One of our own had, had eye surgery. Time now to lay those cares and concerns at God's feet as we bow our heads once again, grab hold of that lifeline and just share. As I lift up those, uh, those that I've become aware of, share some of yours. Uh, prayer is about conversation and relationship between those of us whose eyes are opening and a God who cares for us all. Let's bow our heads. So the Lord, we're, we're wanting to reach out to Steve's family. Steve Amber, Abergast, I struggle with the last name. For Moses and Reham and their whole family, we just ask your special grace. For Rick, as he's recovering uh, from hip surgery. For John, recovering from eye surgery. For Lisa, whose family is ill and so far from her. For each and every one of us, as we just have to chart our course through these unfamiliar and even unwelcome waters that the last several months have brought, open our eyes to see what you're trying to show us. Open our hearts to one another
help us to stand for what we believe, for who you are, for some better ways of holding each other, encouraging each other, loving each other. Be with those who lead and guide us, accepting the challenges that come right alongside the opportunities. It's election year, and sometimes I get weary. at the partial truths and the unkind words coming from every direction. But again, Lord, open our eyes, open our hearts. Help us sift and sort and settle, settle on this vision you have given. Give us faith that is strong enough, love that lasts long enough, hope that endures all things, that we might be your people moving through life in the ways you would have us go. These thoughts we lay at your feet, Lord, asking, asking for your wisdom along your way each and every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're winding down, coming to a close of our time together this week. And I want to thank those who have made giving a priority in your lives. Your gifts continue to bless us and keep this ministry strong. We, we cannot continue without you. Thank you to those who, who are finding new ways uh, to share the blessings that God has sown into your hearts and, and your lives as you're working in the garden, uh, as you're greeting one another, as you're baking uh, those cookies and treats that find their way at people's doorsteps on Saturdays uh, as as, as you're filling your life, sharing the blessings that God has brought. Thank you. Just want to remind you some excitement on Wednesday, 4.30 to 6.30 in the evening. Temperature should be a little cooler. Chance to pick up items that you've ordered from the fair trade cart. Lisa's been uh, trying to keep that information in front of you, find a list on the website, www.westhighlandsumc.com. Send those orders in to missions at westhighlandsumc.com. Chance to pick up communion elements. We'll be offering communion next Sunday, our first Sunday in September. And we'll have some produce some fresh produce available from some of our folks who just love to garden and, and love even more to share. So Wednesday, Wednesday, we'll have things uh, set up and ready. You won't need to leave your car. Uh, you can just keep that mask on and, and, and receive a blessing. Yeah, receive a blessing. Special opportunity, Wednesday. Hope to see you. But know as this week rolls out, 
that God goes with you, opening your eyes and your hearts, showing you how to open your lives to those who cross your path. That God who is Father, loving and kind, Son, giving and gracious, Spirit, ever present to encourage and guide and gift West Highlands UMC be who you are God's people Amen Devil Get thee behind me You ain't riding shotgun no more This gravel road Cuts through the badlands Where only sinners and lost souls roam I've been granted one chance at forgiveness By a rogue angel who's gonna drive me home Devil, get thee behind me You ain't riding shotgun no more The angel of mercy, she turned my trunk around Never gonna ride another trouble store I was raised tough by a veteran outlaw learn how to live life on a white life raising hell was an old family tradition I'll be my daddy's daughter till the day I die devil get thee behind me you ain't riding shotgun no more The angel of mercy She turned my trunk around Never gonna rob another trouble store No, I never gave from another's misfortune But I learned how to turn a trick or two Let the devil's liquid fire no more cold heart and to forget the wicked things I was born to do Gonna join the spirits drinking up on bootleg Hey, hell devil, get thee behind me You ain't riding shotgun no more The angel of mercy, she turned my trunk around Never gonna rob another trouble store No, no, no Oh,